Hey, my friends, the Roman poet Horace over 2000 years ago wrote, do not bring a God on the stage unless the problem is one that deserves a God to solve it. You know how detective shows bring in this person and that person to try to solve the problem, but rarely does anyone bring in God to solve the problem. Well, in response to the poet Horace, uh, we do have a problem on this planet that needs a God. Let me read to you the passage we're studying today. We're in Romans 3.21. Now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. And there is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. So let me look at the big context with you. In chapter one, we've already studied that, where Paul is laying out the tragic exchange that we as humans have committed, where we have exchanged our high place as being made in the image of God for sin. In chapter two, he talks about, quote, the good sinner, the moral sinner, the religious sinner, the person that maybe grew up in the church and has forgotten the fact that we too are sinners. And so he summarizes it all in chapter three, verse 23, all, all, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So the problem demands a God to solve this problem. We are on a planet that it is, is in runaway mutiny against God. And there's no way that anyone religious, non-religious, any part of the continent, any part of the planet can be right with God. Now, what's typical is that we blame God for our situation. And Paul lays that out in chapter three, where he runs through these series of arguments that people put forth against God, where in the beginning of chapter three, he says, is there any value? in being moral or religious if we've all sinned. And Paul says, yes, there is. It, through religious upbringing, we learn truth. But then he says, but if moral and religious people are, religious, are sinners too, then God himself has failed. And Paul says, no, humans have failed. <laughs> then the next argument is, but if our wrong makes God's truth shine, then why are we punished? And he elaborates even more on that and says, if our untruth ultimately serves as a backdrop for God's glory, why are we condemned? It's God's problem, not ours. And this is typical. It was typical in Paul's day. It was typical in Jesus' day with the Pharisees arguing with Jesus, even the woman at the well debated with Jesus. Or even today, you and I have friends that will say to us, I just think that if there, if there is a God, that he should just accept us for who we are. If there's sin, God just needs to get over it. I think we're all basically good. Uh, that God is whoever you want him to be. You've heard them all. But here's the deal. God has offered you and I complete forgiveness, clean slate. But Paul tells us here, it comes by faith. And what is faith? Faith is surrendering our heart and life to Jesus. We do that when we commit our lives to Christ and we do it daily as we renew our commitment to Christ. So our friends, they put forth all of these arguments. They're just not in trouble enough that they need a God to save them. Uh, they, they're not ready to wave the white flag and come out of their foxhole and surrender to God. But you and I have surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ and have discovered the great 
love of God. And that's the love that I want you to live in today as you trust him with your whole life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this new day, a day to walk by faith in Jesus Christ, who is our righteousness, and that we now are accepted in the beloved. Our sin is paid for, and we are in your family, put right with you. Now empower us and walk with us this day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.